this uh, third lesson from Psalm 1, for those of you that may have seen lessons 1 and 2, um, it's somewhat repetitive. But I think a theme here in this Psalm 1, especially verse 1, is the degenerative nature of sin. Sin always tightens its grip on its victims. And it seems somewhat um, innocent in the beginning. It seems like something that I can trifle with a bit. I can quit at any time. We hear that from people. Oh, I can quit any time. I don't care whether it's drinking, drugs, gambling, whoever. Oh, I can quit whenever I want. When I was a very small child, was at summer camp, and the teacher, you know, asked for volunteers. And of course, every little four or five year old, I think I was five, volunteers. And I got chosen to come to the front. And the teacher put one black thread. I put my wrists together, and the teacher put one black thread around my wrists, and then told me, try to break it. Well, I broke it, Not, no problem. And then the teacher put two, I think two, maybe three strands around my wrist. Go ahead and try to break it. It was a little bit harder, but I managed to break it. And of course, it's a simple little illustration, but it still made, it's, it made a mark on me. I'll never forget standing up there in front of all these other little kids. And the teacher finally wound enough strands of that black thread around my wrist. I couldn't break it. And of course then the teacher uh, made clear to us, this is what happens when you start doing bad things and you keep doing them. And pretty soon the devil gets you tight and tightly wound enough that you can't get out. This is illustrated in this passage by the decline, the declining and degenerative nature of the words used for the people here that were to avoid and whose example were to shy away from. The words used here, ungodly, sinners, and scornful. The ungodly are those who are um, basically good people. You know, we would call him, he's a good guy. And a lot of, a lot of times they, they may have some Christian principles. Um, they are careful. I was talking to a man the other day who wasn't swearing horribly, but was, you know, salting his language pretty good. Um, and we were strangers. We were waiting for a pallet of ice melt to be brought into um, Menards so we could get rid of some ice here in the last few weeks. And he was a very nice guy, interesting guy. He starts talking to me and <clears throat> told me he was raised in church and he was an altar boy and all this. And then he asked me, um, what do you do? And I said, I told him I, I pastored High Plains Church. And oh, he was very impressed. You know, I'm, that's great to hear. And I was raised in church. Or, and I noticed him after he after I told him what I did, he started to say uh, some swear word and caught himself and didn't. And all the rest of the conversation, which lasted 10 minutes of just stuff in general, there, not another word. And a few times I saw him just about to say something, and then he caught himself. Um, and he even kind of joined me in talking about God. Uh, God loves us all and all this, you know. Well. He wasn't some just hellish hater of God, cursing God. He was a good guy. I think we know what we mean when we say that. But he, that's what this word means. It means a fairly decent principle, probably honest, fairly decent guy, but he just doesn't need God every day in his life. He acknowledges God 
and is somewhat respectful, but, you know, that's it. I don't really need God on a daily basis. I'm okay. But you go in that path, and then you'll come to where you decline into willful sinning. Um, since you don't really regard God that much, then his laws, especially the laws you kind of disagree with and would prefer to do the things he says not to do, well, it's okay. But your heart gets hardened. Your resolve to disobey God gets a little stiffer. And you begin the habitual practice of things you know you shouldn't do. It may take some years, but as you continue down that road of sinning, willful transgression, you will become further and further estranged from God. And you cannot help it. Our hearts are made in such a way that we become more and more what we are. And the longer we disobey the Lord, the harder our heart gets. And if we live long enough and we resist God hard enough, we get to the place where we now mock the things we once considered at least something we should respect. We may never have been a true Christian, but we at least had regard for those who were. And now we've graduated downward to where we are hostile we're irritated at those who are Christians. They rub us the wrong way. They remind us of better days we may have had in our tenderness towards the things of God. There is always a degenerative path, a downward path when we get involved in sin. Only God can then deliver us from that and it is so subtle, and it is so gradual, incremental, that we, we don't even recognize it. We can become, we can literally end up like poor dear Samson, who started down a pathway and was blinded more and more, and uttered the, some of the, you have uttered in the book of Judges, some of the saddest words, I think, about him. He said, I'll go out like at other times against the Philistines. The Holy Spirit has, had left him, but it says he knew not that God had departed from him. He was so insensitive to how far down the road he'd become that he didn't even recognize that God was gone. And when he went out to try to fight the Philistines and so forth, we know the tragic story. They conquered him easily, blinded him, and had him uh, turning a millstone in the prison um, the rest of his days. That's the end of this degenerative process. God deliver us from ever starting down it because it leads to ruin. Father in heaven, keep us and Lord, help us remember, we are in a what's called a probationary period here. We, we can grow stronger and deeper in you and closer as the days go by, or we can forfeit the grace that you've given us, and we can be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin and end up losing our souls. So God help us be on guard and fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on eternal life that we not be deceived. In Christ's name we pray, amen.